today to urge Horace Mann School in New York to conduct an immediate, independent, and transparent investigation into the worst case of child sexual abuse in an American school in recent history. We are asking Horace Mann to conduct this investigation because of the horrific sexual abuse suffered by children at the hands of sexual predators, which we will describe today, and it was inflicted on Horace Mann students, either by teachers and or administrators who were employed at Horace Mann when they preyed on children at the school. My law partner, Nathan Goldberg, my co-counsel, Marianne Wong, and I represent the majority of the adult survivors of child sexual abuse at Horace Mann. Some of our 25 clients are with us today and are willing to be identified. You will hear from some of them shortly. They carried with them the pain, suffering that began when they were students at Horace Mann and which has continued throughout their lives and which is still here in this room with them today. They are here because they want Horace Mann and the New York Legislature to take action to be sure that the abuse that they have suffered is never inflicted on children again. For nearly a quarter of a century, our clients, sometimes as young as 11 and 12 years old, were raped anally and vaginally and or sexually assaulted and sexually abused by their teachers and administrators. Although, as far as we are aware, none of these culpable teachers and administrators are employed by Horace Mann today, while many of our clients were for, what many of our clients were forced to endure is truly shocking. Students were forced to masturbate or orally copulate their teachers. One teacher engaged in statutory rape with his female student, our client, who is not here today, for the entirety of her time at Horace Mann. Our 25 clients consist of 22 men and three women who are now primarily in their 40s and 50s and 60s and who carry with them the scars of the terrible sexual abuse that they suffered at the Horace Mann School. A number of our clients were anally raped at a time when they were not old enough to really understand what was happening to them. For nearly all of our clients, the abuse that they suffered amounted to the first time that they were experiencing any sexual touching or interaction. They knew that they did not want what was happening to them to happen, but for many, there were no words to express what was happening to them. The perpetrators consisted of more than a dozen teachers and administrators at the school. A number of the perpetrators were serial offenders abusing multiple victims. The abuse occurred at various locations, on campus, at the perpetrator's homes, and on school-sponsored trips. There was no perpetrator-free zone at the school, and no place where a child was safe. Many of the victims were groomed by their perpetrators. They were identified as being particularly vulnerable because they were having conflict with a parent, or their parents might have been going through a divorce, or some other issue was causing stress in their family. They often turned to the perpetrators as a source of comfort and of help. The perpetrators made them feel as though they cared and that the children were special. Some of the victims effectively lived in the homes of the perpetrators where they were sexually assaulted and or raped on a daily basis. One of the teachers bragged that he had driven 12 boys to suicide. That particular teacher was reported to a school administrator as early as spring 1970. During a later effort to complain again to another school administrator many years later, our client was told that many people had complained about this particular teacher over the years, but that he could not believe that such a brilliant teacher could do things like that. That teacher was allowed to abuse a number of other students and physically beat at least one student after the school was made aware of his abuse. The impact of that sexual abuse has been catastrophic for our clients. The abuse occurred when they were children, 
precisely at a moment in their lives when they were trying to learn how to be themselves in the world, and precisely at the hands of teachers who were they most trusted and admired. Suddenly they learned, through the abuse, that they were worthless and they could trust no one. Many of them suffered from feelings of hopelessness, and after leaving Horace Mann were never able to live fulfilling lives or live up to what their parents and they had hoped and expected them to achieve. Many of our clients have sought out therapists over the years, trying to obtain help for dealing with what happened to them as students. Many have struggled with suicidal thoughts and feelings. And some have been hospitalized because of the abuse. Some clients have been diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder, depression and anxiety, for which they've had to take various medications in order to survive. The violation of the trust and the betrayal by these teachers have led to spirals of depression and ongoing struggles for virtually all of our clients. Clients have reported feeling isolated and alone with few close friends and difficulty with intimate and family relationships. Each of them feels profoundly betrayed by the teachers and the administrators that were supposed to be taking care of them and by the institution that their parents paid money for them to attend. They live with feelings of shame and humiliation that has caused them to keep the secret for all of these years. In one case, our client dropped out of school and was unable to attend school for years because of what happened to him. In several cases, clients turned to drugs and alcohol abuse in order to try to cope with the abuse. This case is unique. Unlike many other school sex scandals in the news, which involve one predator, for example, Penn State and Poly Prep, this case involves multiple sexual predators employed by Horace Mann, either as teachers and or administrators. In addition, our case is unique because the horrific sexual abuse occurred over a period of nearly 25 years and because the number of child victims is so high, estimated at more than 30. What also makes this case unique is that one of the abusers was Inky Clark, Horace Mann's headmaster for a decade, who was then elevated to become president of Horace Mann for another decade. Mr. Clark was very good friends with Johanna Samari, a Horace Mann music teacher, who was also a serial sexual abuser who abused a number of our clients. Mr. Clark gathered around him a group of child molesters, the likes of which have never before been seen or heard of in a school in this country. Inky Clark and some of the other administrators not only abused students, but also protected the predators that, that, that preyed on them and misled students about what they could do about the abuse. For example, Horace Mann administrators actively informed several of our clients, including one in 1970 and one decades later, that Horace Mann's policy regarding sexual abuse required the school to credit the teacher, not the student. The policy, in essence, was not to investigate, not to call the police. Instead, it was to threaten the children that they would, quote, tarnish, end quote, themselves, and would have their lives destroyed if they told anyone. Several of our clients were told in no uncertain terms that no one would believe their allegations, that by pursuing their complaints, they would jeopardize their ability to get into good universities, and that the abusers would sue them for libel. The list goes on. For these reasons, most of the survivors kept their abuse a secret. They thought that they were alone and were not aware that others had been abused. Many of them did not have the words to describe what was happening to them at the age of 12 and 13 at the hands of people they trusted and were told that they should respect. We're here today because our courageous clients want Horace Mann and the New York legislature to take action to be sure that the abuse that they have suffered is never inflicted on children again. 
Since the scope and severity of the suffering was revealed last summer, the survivors have come together and repeatedly asked the school to conduct a broad investigation to uncover the extent of the abuse and the extent of the knowledge of the abuse by school administrators. To date, as far as we are aware, the school has not yet agreed to undertake a full, independent, and transparent investigation into this horrific child sexual abuse scandal. An independent investigation is vitally important to many of the survivors whom we represent. An investigation will help the school, parents, young people, and the broader community learn how and why this could have happened. How it could have continued for so long in Horace Mann, which is considered to be, by many, the most prestigious private school in the New York area and one of the top schools in the nation. The injuries to many of the children who were sexually abused are deep and in many cases will last the rest of their lives. We represent clients that have been in therapy for the past 30 or so years to deal with the abuse. We want to make sure that Horace Mann and other schools will never again let this happen to innocent and vulnerable children in their care. The only way that this can be done is to first understand the full scope of what occurred and how it was able to occur and be kept secret for so long. We believe that an independent investigation with a public report at its conclusion can help to accomplish that goal. George Santayana said it best, quote, those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it, end quote. We also want the New York legislature to pass the Markey Bill, AB 1771, which creates a one-year window for survivors of child sexual abuse to assert their legal claims, no matter how long ago the abuse occurred. Passage of this bill into law is extremely important to child molestation victims. In California, a similar bill was signed into law in July 2002, and it helped many adult victims of child sexual abuse to have access to justice for their claims they had previously been unable to assert because they were time barred by the statute of limitations. The present law in New York hurts child sexual abuse victims and protects predators. Horace Mann as an institution should live up to the pronouncements it has made to the world about what the school believes. Horace Mann School is built on its motto, quote, great is the truth and it prevails, end quote. Horace Mann can and should seek the truth. It can do so by immediately agreeing to conduct an independent investigation which seeks to determine what exactly happened for years at the school and how and why it was kept buried. The school can also find out if there's anyone who may still be affiliated with Horace Mann who knew this secret, that certain teachers and administrators were preying on children and tried to keep the truth from coming out. It can then take the appropriate action to sever its relationship with those individuals. In other words, the truth requires Horace Mann to take responsibility and then take action. It has taken enormous courage for our clients to have come forward today. Our 25 clients, who were children in Horace Mann, were victimized by their teachers and their administrators. As a result, Horace Mann must now do everything that they can do to conduct an independent and transparent investigation and take immediate action to get to the truth. Great is the truth, and it must prevail. Now, uh, I'm going to present John Steiger, and John will be the first, and he will pray for us. Very strong progressive, so you're not able to uh, hear that or don't wish to hear that to be the point of view.
Uh, we are going to be presenting a photo, a photo of each person who will be speaking. Look, look, sorry, I have to just move my mic. Is it not coming up okay? I'm going to put the photo of the perpetrator that he's speaking about yes. here. And, and the perpetrator, if you will be identifying, she'll be there for more than one. That photo will be placed over there. And we'll have everything available for everyone afterwards. So. Uh, my name is John Seiger. I attended Horace Mann from the age of 11 to the age of 17, from 7th to 12th grade. I graduated from Horace Mann in 1979. The only year I did not attend Horace Mann was in eighth grade when my family lived in England for a year. During all the years I attended Horace Mann, I suffered sexual abuse. Eight different Horace Mann faculty abused me, including the headmaster of the school, Inky Clark, as well as Stanley Copps, Mark Wright, and Johannes Samari. Instead of a safe and nurturing place that would educate me, Horace Mann ended up providing a perfect storm of childhood sexual abuse. Pinky Clark, Horace Mann's headmaster, began his abuse of me in the ninth grade. One day after a Glee Club concert in the ninth grade, Clark approached me and invited me to his house on a Friday afternoon. I was 14 and I was uh, over the moon. The headmaster was inviting me uh, and recognizing I was special. I arrived at Clark's home after school at about 4 p.m. Clark and another teacher, Stanley Copps, were both there waiting. Clark offered me a drink. Uh, I expected a Coca-Cola, but instead I was given alcohol and plied repeatedly with more of the same. Uh, within a short time, I had drunk two or three strong alcoholic drinks. My 14-year-old body felt strange and overwhelmed. Clark and the cops then suggested we all drive downtown for some dinner, and instead they drove down to a nightclub on East 59th Street. I remember being in the club and noticing it was filled with only two types of men, men over 50 and much younger adolescents and men under 20 years old. Eventually Clark and the cops picked up two young men and directed us all back to Clark's car. I remember asking to be dropped off at home but Clark insisted on driving him back to his home. Once back at Clark's house, Clark and cops had the two young men, who I eventually understood were prostitutes, engage in sexual acts. They forced me to join them. Ultimately, I was required at age 14 to engage in oral sex with each of them and be anally penetrated by each of them in front of Clark and cops for the headmaster and history teacher's enjoyment. Later, Clark and cops sent the two male prostitutes away and uh, continued to engage in sexual abuse of me, including require that I, uh, requiring that I engage in oral sex with each of them. After that night, uh, both Clark and cops repeatedly treated me as their sex object and personal plaything. On approximately five more occasions over the next several years, Inky Clark directed me to come to his house on campus so that he could anally penetrate me or give or receive oral sex. On one additional occasion, Stanley Copps and a friend of his directed me to come to one of their apartments where they forced me to masturbate and Copps took pictures of me. I believe that Copps may have shared these pictures with other teachers of Horace Mann, which may be why I became a target for so many teachers. I was active in glee club, orchestra, and jazz programs throughout the year at Horace Mann, throughout the years at Horace Mann. I had always found solace in music because I played many intramural concerts. I often traveled to New Jersey and Connecticut with other music students and Johannes Samari. Samari had always been touchy, uh, leaving his hands on my shoulder for too long or brushing my hair away from my face. And I remember that on one trip in ninth grade, Samari came into my hotel room and began kissing me, opening his mouth and using his tongue, and that Samari also started to fondle me. I was 14 at the time. That summer, between 9th and 10th grades, I went to Poland for three weeks with Samari and others. On at least three occasions, Samari would get me quite drunk and insist on uh, performing oral sex. Over the course of the next several years, Samari routinely grabbed me and held me in long embraces, pressing up against me, kissing and groping me. Uh, 
that happened over 30 times, usually at the school in a classroom or Samari's office. On at least 10 occasions, Samari figured out ways of getting me alone in a room and engaging in oral or anal sex with Samari anally penetrated me. I pulled a muscle in my leg in gym, and at the end of gym period, uh, my teacher, Mark Wright, instructed me to come to an office to be physically examined. I followed Wright downstairs to a windowless room where Wright locked the door and instructed me to take off all my clothes. Wright began by checking my legs. He said something about needing to check that my leg muscles connected properly and began touching my penis. Wright then masturbated me. I was 15 at the time. These are only some of the abuses I suffered at Horace Mann. My childhood was taken from me. There was no safe place anywhere at Horace Mann because everywhere I turned, another predator lurked. As a direct result of the sexual abuse by Inky Clark and Stanley Cops, I was introduced to the world of male prostitution and gay porn in New York City in the 70s and 80s. When I finally stopped my self-destructive behavior, my internal feelings of worthlessness overcame me, and I began to struggle to live without drugs and find peace. To say that Horace Mann knew about the sexual abuse of its students seems to me to be an understatement. Uh, the institution under Inky Clark fostered, promoted, and carefully grew and developed the abuse. These predators appear to have spoken to one another identifying and passing the most vulnerable students around. My experiences make that clear. The school must conduct a full independent investigation so the extent and depth of the abuse is finally brought to light and so like nothing like this can ever happen again. And New York should pass the Markey Bill so that the victims of sexual abuse are permitted to seek justice in the courts and the perpetrators who are still alive are fully punished. Thank you. My name is Edward Bowen. I was sexually abused by Johanna Samari, a teacher of mine at the Horace Mann School, when I was 16 years old. Part of my story was told in last year's New York Times story, where I was identified as E.B. I want to make sure that everyone knows that the statute of limitations on childhood sexual abuse is a device that protects criminals. It is not some obscure legal jargon that does not really matter. I am fully in support of the Markey Bill and firmly believe that the statute of limitations should be eliminated altogether. Why is New York protecting criminals? sexually abused repeatedly as a 13-year-old at Horace Mann. The effects of that abuse on my life have been profound. For many years I refused to go to school because I became frightened. School was no longer a safe place to learn, but turned into a frightening place where predators lurked. Figuring out the words to express what happened to me took many, many years and I'm still unraveling how it altered the course of my life. Precisely because it took me many decades to even begin to understand the abuse and its impact, New York should do the right thing, pass the Markey Bill, being the allowed victims of childhood sexual abuse to be claims, and would permit prosecutions to proceed.
guilty even though the abuse may have occurred long ago. opportunity to be an example to others who are abused and who suffer in silence. You are not alone. You can find your voice. More, more must be done to remove the shame and stigma of childhood sexual abuse. To start, I believe Horace Mann should issue a formal apology and ensure that an independent investigation is conducted to explain why and how this happened. I also strongly support the Markey Bill, which is essential to encourage institutions to root out, not cover up, abuse. Thank you. Uh, before we take questions, we have one survivor who could not be here today, but who wished to speak and has something important to say. So it's very brief, but we're going to play it. And we do have DVDs that we're going to give out at the end for anyone who would like to see him and who anyone would like to have a copy to take with them and use for, for this story. Um, but we will play the sound now. His name is Joseph Kami. And uh, is it, all the way it can also be viewed immediately thereafter on our computer. Mine. sexually abused on many occasions by my teacher and mentor, Johanna Samari, beginning when I was 15 years old and continuing until just before my 18th birthday. For 33 years, I thought I was alone. I thought I was the only person who had suffered these things at Horace Mann. I thought I was alone in carrying the shame and pain I felt. In 2011, I discovered for the first time that I was not alone. After talking with another Horace Mann graduate who had also been abused, I began to reach out to others. I have since learned that I was one of many who were abused as children by many teachers at Horace Mann over a period of decades. I have also learned from others that the Horace Mann administration was informed about Samara's abuse of at least one other student several years before he began targeting me. In other words, if the school had taken decisive action many years ago, many of us would never have suffered the abuse we did. I want to say something to anyone who has been abused as we were. You are not alone. We are familiar with the shame, 
the depression, the struggles with alcohol and substance abuse, the temptations to suicide, the broken relationships, the list goes on. You can find support at HoraceManSurvivor.org. I want to say something to the Horace Mann Board of Trustees. In June 2012, we presented you with a letter from the Survivors Group in which we set forth what steps we believed were necessary to restore the reputation of our beloved alma mater and to ensure that such things could never again happen at Horace Mann. Chief among these was an independent investigation. An investigation would not only ascertain the extent and level of sexual abuse, but would also communicate to present and future students that if, God forbid, they should ever suffer abuse, that they could report that abuse with confidence that the school will take them seriously, will investigate their report, and will not bury their story or pressure them into silence. An independent investigation is the path to a healed Horace Mann. Healing for those who suffered the abuse and for the wider community of alumni and for the students and parents at Horace Mann today who also deserve to know the truth. <laughs>